today i will show you how to model a 100 mm rc shock or rather i will show you how i modeled this 100 mm rc shock in fusion 360 i have sped up the video to 4x to make it less boring to watch so if you want to try and follow along just set the speed to 0.25x i am trying this for the first time so do share your critiques and comments so that i can make better videos this is vishnu welcome to above the line thought behind making this video is that i've used some techniques which i found in some other tutorials which are not very obvious to make the spring work so i wanted to share it here so that others could benefit from it and probably i can as well refer back to it later trying to design a fully 3d printable rc car and integrate something like the donkey car project into the design itself i have been using fusion 360 for some time now mostly for designing enclosures for hobby projects small replacement parts for household items etc this is the first time i'm trying to do a project of this size a big shout out to engineering ns and the hardware guy these guys are the inspiration behind me trying something like this link to their pages in the description below do check them out When modeling things like this, one good practice which I found to be very useful is to use already drawn components as reference in the coming sketches. This makes keeping the sketches fully constrained easier. It also helps in changing any parameters or scaling the component later on.
Initially, I took some time to wrap my head around the circular pattern tool because I did not find it uh, very intuitive. But once you figure that out, it is amazing what all you can do with that. As much as possible, I try to keep my sketches fully constrained because when you are building sketches referring to other components and you are uh, making components referring to other components, it becomes a nightmare to change even the slightest of things later on if the uh, sketch is not fully constrained.
now comes the most interesting part of the video, the working spring. In Fusion 360, there is no straightforward way to model a working spring. So this is a slightly modified version of a technique I saw some time back. Basically what we need to do is to split the spring body into multiple bodies and then apply revolute joints between each of them. This is a very time consuming process. So if you ask me whether it's worth it, I don't know. But it looks good when the spring actually works. When adding a revolute joint, always select the component in the same order, say from bottom to top and make sure that the flags are all facing the same direction. This will make it easier later to adjust the limits. Now add rigid joints between the spring and the bottom and top uh, uh, tensioners. Now the spring kind of works but the links are going all over the place. To correct this we need to add motion links between the slider joint and each of these revolute joints and give it a scale as to say every 10 millimeters of uh, movement from the slider joint how much should the revolute joint rotate when adding this motion link skip a few links on the top and bottom because if you put motion links for all joints then the spring won't move it might be possible to find the mapping for the motion link mathematically but I just did some trial and error to arrive at the value. The left joint and right joint will have to move in the opposite direction. So set the direction to reverse on one side. And finally, on those top and bottom revolute joints which we skipped, add some joint limits and we are done. If you found this video interesting, please consider subscribing to my channel and share the video with others. Thanks for watching. Until next time, this is Vishnu from Above the Line.